In this tutorial, I'll show you how to do some quick light painting using Red 5 in Avid Media Composer. Hey, how's it going? Here I am in Avid Media Composer, ready to add some cool light painting effects onto my clip here from Digital Juice using Boris Red 5. So here's my Boris filter. I'm going to launch the effect editor and then launch the red interface. So now here I am in Red 5, and what I'm going to do is hide the video which is coming from Avid so we can see the paint system and how it works and then I'll get into the nitty-gritty stuff so I've got a deselected blank looking timeline here to get red to paint you can click on the brush tool or select down here the uh, paint layer and then just begin drawing away so I'm using a mouse at this point you can see some pretty simple brush strokes here as soon as I start clicking and dragging, you have these new tracks appearing in your timeline. So paint one, paint path, color stroke. These are all different ways to control all of the paint strokes or individual paint strokes that you draw. For example, let's create another one above this right here. So now I've got two of these. So I can go into stroke two and make this one maybe blue, make this one like yellow or green or something. Okay, so that was done individually. Now, if I want to make some global change, I can go back into uh, this level here, and maybe I want them all to be bigger now. So now every future brush stroke I do is going to be larger. So you can see that you can make kind of global changes or individual changes in the timeline. I'm going to delete all these. Now, let's say you're not using a mouse. Let's say you're using a Wacom tablet. Well, I got one of those right here. And I'll prove it to you by writing something. All right, it would be impossible to write that with a mouse as quickly as I just did, right? Um, except I didn't really get the eye down right. So anyway, we have a uh, nice little Wacom tablet available to us. And what does that give us that the mouse doesn't? Well, let's say I make a brush stroke here. And if I'm using very light pressure, look how thin the line is. And if I press harder, See, it gets a lot bigger, also a little bit more opaque. So what I've done here is I've set up my controls window to use the pressure from the tablet as an opacity modifier, and I can adjust the baseline opacity here too, and to adjust the size of the stroke. So if I change these you know, default values, I can keep the strokes bigger or smaller at default, and I can make them more or less opaque at default as well. So I'm using a tablet now, and I have access to all these different physical attributes, such as velocity, direction, tilt uh, from the stylus, and, there's, and these can adjust the opacity size, even the color for me. So watch this. I'll do a little color swatch on pressure and make the colors very different. So now you can see a very different looking line here. Here's another one. So you could do some really you know, fun, creative stuff with the tablet if you have one based on these pressure settings. OK, let's delete those. So let's look at our source video again. I'm going to draw a cell phone, an old style cell phone, and then have the strokes animate onto the screen. So let's have the cell phone as if it's appearing on this banner here. So I'm going to use my Wacom tablet and just start drawing. Here's the, the antenna. You remember antennas? Those little things that come out of the phone that no one wants to put near their head, right? And there we go. Okay, so that's certainly not a bad cell phone case, but it could be better. Now, one of the great things is that I can just click on that stroke and make it a spline path. Now, if I select the pen tool, I can make really nice, fine geometric adjustments to these brush strokes. If I have more points than I need, I can delete them. If I have less, I can add more. Um, I can change handle, you know, rotations and stuff. Okay, the rest looks pretty good. Sure, it's round here and sharp here, but that's the style. It's a razor. Okay, it's not, but let's continue drawing. All right, so I want to deselect spline path now because I don't want the rest of my images to be spline based. Now I'm going to continue drawing details into the cell phone. So I'm going to need a monitor, very primitive monitor there. Add a 
call and end button. These are very specialized styled buttons here. You know, you have to pay extra to get these buttons that aren't perfect rectangles. So this person probably spent a lot of money to get this cell phone. Look, it doesn't even have the uh, full nine keys because it doesn't need them. Okay, so a wonderful looking cell phone here. You know what, I think I will fix up this button. Now how do I know which stroke that is? Well, kind of process of elimination to identify it there. So let's make that one a spline. So everything that I've done here is live. I can make changes and go back and, you know, fix things. See, if I turn that off, it undoes what I did. So I've got to leave that as a spline path now. All right. So there we go. Okay. So I got my cell phone, and it's uh, looking like a drawing of a cell phone. So what are we going to do with it? Well, we're going to do a couple things. First thing I'm going to show you how to do is how to transform all of these strokes at once. So I've got this global track here. And then I've got two tabs up here. So I can make all the strokes draw away or draw on, which is the animated effect that I'm going to do in just a minute. But before I get to that, let me reposition the phone a bit. So I can reposition all the strokes at once as if you know they were all part of one object. So let's go to here. This is about where the phone will be fully visible for the first time. So I'm going to move all these strokes onto the banner. I'm going to create a keyframe, a linear keyframe here. And I'm going to go further off. That's where they're all off screen. I'm going to put them all away. And I'm going to make this a hold keyframe. OK, so it's going to go on there, go off, and you know never come back. <laughs> just like a lot of missed calls, right? Uh, anyway, so time it up just a little bit. I could, of course, be using a motion tracker kind of effect to do this, but this is just showing you the transforms. And at the very start, it should be further up. Maybe like around there. Oh no, I must have repositioned it there. Okay, around there. Okay, good. Okay, so we have our phone moving on our background. Now another cool thing that I'm going to do is change the scale of the phone so it looks like it's coming around a corner or unshrinking or something. So I'm going to unlink X and Y. I'm going to start with X being 0. Make that linear. And now that it's linear uh, 0, we're going to have to reposition it a little bit. And now if we go forward, hey, see what I'm going for? Yeah, it's coming along. OK, so at this point, I want the scale to be 100. And how does that look? Does it match perfectly? Nope. Doesn't have to be perfect, but we can make it better. So let's put another keyframe in here to help guide it along. And another one here. Yeah, I said it doesn't have to be perfect, but then I take all the time in the world to make this little change. OK. So there you go. That's good. OK, so we've got the phone sort of matching the uh, perspective in our video. Now let's make it draw on. So let's go back into the top paint controls. I want to go to the first keyframe and make them all 0. I'm going to set this to decelerate. This is going to make it look like the strokes are slowing down as they wrap up. Let's have them finish here like a good spot and have this be a hold keyframe so they stay on for the whole time. So now you can see all the little strokes are drawing on. Cool. But what if I want them all to come on simultaneously? Well I can do that too. Instead of reveal order set to sequential, I'll go to parallel. So now all the strokes are coming on at once and they all finish at the same time. So a lot of cool different effects you can get here with the, the paint on. Okay, so I've got all that set up. It looks great. Now let's make it 
you know, glow. Let's put the light part into the light painting. So I've got this whole track here, and I'm going to add a glow effect from BCC. Let's do Colorize Glow. Okay, first thing you notice, it's glowing everything on the screen. That's not a problem. For now, let's just hide our video. Okay, so I'm going to increase the intensity, bring down the softness and the blur amount. See, suddenly those rough brush strokes don't look quite so bad. And also, I'm in half you know, quality mode. Pump it up, it'll look a little better also. Okay, so I've got my glowing, t my glowing phone. Let's uh, change the hue a little bit. I guess I can make it a little softer. Okay, good. So now it looks a little bit more dramatic. One more cool thing to do, let's add light rays. So I'm going to go into BCC effects again. This time, raise puffy. And hey, check that out. So you just got to decide where you want the light to be coming from. There was a window way over here, but it's too far away. So we're going to cheat it a little there. And now, yeah, notice how the light rays change angle depending on where the light source is coming from. I just think that's cool. You know, of course they should, but it's just cool. OK. Now, as awesome as this looks, let's create a new track to nest all of these effects into. So I'm going to create a new spline object track. There's nothing in it, so if I move these three tracks into here, it'll sort of pre-compose them in a sense. And there you have just the light coming off the cell phone. And what's great is that these are all still live effects, so I can turn up the intensity of any one of them and then continue on as normal. Okay, so that was cool. Now what if you want to do a new paint effect with maybe a different style on it? Well, if I deselect everything, and start painting again, like maybe I want to put a, uh, you know, bit of volume coming off the phone, or a vibration, so these, you know, I think these are the universal sign of volume or signal or vibration or something. Notice that they were created in a new paint track. So if I want, I can, you know, change the settings of all these independently so they stand out. I'm going to let the glow and light rays do that for me. So let's do the same uh, track nesting we did before. This time I can just cheat, take these filters and put them back into the spline track. Put the paint track there too. Okay, so now I've got the uh, you know sonic boom <laughs> of a vibration coming off the phone, and I meant to copy and paste these. There you go. Okay, now we don't want those on visible the whole time, so let's make this whole track not appear. So you know, ring, 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 or vibrate, vibrate, vibrate. Doesn't have to do it for too long. And while it's doing that, let's have some uh, animation happening to those paint tracks. So maybe uh, rotate Z. Yeah, sure. And like a, I don't know, scale XY to. And let's reposition it so it matches the phone a little better. OK. Well, it's doing a very subtle uh, changes. Let's do some more. And that's too much. OK. So that's simple. Nice. Good. Let's change the color of the glow and the rays. Make it stand out more. See how easy it is to make these really dramatic changes? I'm just using presets that are loaded in the filter here. So now we've got some really uh, striking color contrast. And let's put a kind of global opacity change on this track so it fades in and then fades out. And do linear, start zero, go up to 100, and then uh, it's good. So good keyframe there and then end it. Okay, so we have our cell phone 
ringing or vibrating or whatever it's doing. And then he's answering it. Okay. So there you have a brief introduction to the uh, paint system in red here. Let's go back into our host and see if it looks as good there. Yeah, of course it does. Um, one thing I love about Avid is its ability to scrub timelines quickly. So check that out. I'll give you a nice preview shot of how the rendered effect looks. And there you have it. So if you liked what you saw here, we have more tutorials online on how to do similar paint effects in Avid or Red, rather. And if you really like it but don't have Red, well, you can even download a trial version. And that's at BorisEffects.com.